special thank you to the sponsor of today's video, Squarespace. Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Ellen and welcome to this channel. So I will waste no time at all. I was scrolling Facebook a while ago. Okay, this is a little bit late out of being unwell. Y'all know, y'all know. I was scrolling Facebook a while ago and I came across this, okay? So it took me a little while to figure out what it was, but essentially this is an insider article about a genetically engineered plant, you could say. And the title is, this $119 houseplant is bioengineered to remove harmful air pollution from your home. Yes, I know, plants sort of do that anyway, but trust me, trust me guys, we're gonna get into it, okay? Do not worry. So anyway, I get a bit curious, right? Of course, it's my job to be curious. So I go straight to the website. I kind of skip over the article because I don't, I don't know, I just don't, articles are just not, aren't they? So I thought, we'll go to the source. I will go straight to the website. I scroll through the homepage and it's all very grandiose, to be honest. It talks about innovating nature over machinery. It all sounds very glorious and cutting edge. So I think, all right, let's continue, let's continue. And then eventually I find this video. So I'm just gonna play it for you in full because why not, it's only a couple of minutes. Hi, over the past year, you've been tens of thousands to join our waitlist and ask when you'd be able to get one of our products. Our team has been working very hard to deliver products to you as fast as possible. And today we have something for you. We call it NeoPX. It is the first bioengineered plant system designed to purify the air in your home. Instead of building a bulky, noisy, energy-consuming air purifying machine, we made this. A bioengineered living system that is up to 30 times more effective at purifying the air than any regular house plant. It is the result of years of research and development from our team and has been tested in best-in-class air quality labs. NeoPX is made of three components to effectively purify the air in your home. First, the microbiome. We bioengineered the microorganisms that live outside and inside the plant, like the good bacteria in your body. Through a process called directed evolution, we supercharge the ability of microorganisms to eat pollutants from the air and turn them into useful matter. We call these power drops, and they are the air purifying engine of NeoPX. Second, we chose the perfect host for these power drops, a Marble Queen Pothos, a beautiful and robust plant that we tested with our power drops to ensure optimal performance. And here's how it works. You just have to pour the power drops formula onto the plant's soil. The power drops will slowly sink into the plant's substrate and activate the air purifying metabolism. That's it. We recommend adding the power drops once a month to maintain the performance of NeoPX at the maximum level. Finally, we built a custom planter we call the shell. It is beautifully designed to optimize airflow and ease plant maintenance. So if you don't have a green thumb, don't worry. You just have to fill in the built-in water reservoir twice a month and your plant will water itself. NeoPX is the first of its kind and we can't wait for you to experience it. At NeoPlants, we believe that nature is the most powerful piece of technology in the world and that it's time that we started working with it rather than against it. And this is our very first step. You can order yours today on neoplans.com. So guys, basically at first glance, it looks like they are selling a, what was it? A Marble Queen Pothos, so Epipremnum, in a self-ordering pot with some added drops. I think they call them power drops, okay? Cool, so how much? Guys, it's $139. Yes, it is. It's $139, which is £109 if you're in the UK. Throughout this video, by the way, I'm just going to put money conversions on the screen because it's going to be so much easier. So I know there are more currencies in the world, okay? But just looking at the general metrics of my channel, that's probably going to be the best. I might shove euro in as well, just so... So we have a bearing, okay? So it's 109 UK pounds. The inside article has actually lowballed it and went with the order or a new version of the plant, which was what, $119? It's it's only $119 if you go with the renew option, which we will <laughs> we will get to, guys. This made me so mad, 
right? So mad. And this is after I've looked into it, okay? I'm like a little bit less mad once I've looked into it, but still. So my first question before we get into anything is why sell all of this for that much? Because surely from what we know so far is all of the magic to take away all the pollutants out of the air is in these power drops, right? We know that epipremnum, well, most epipremnum, to be honest, are dirt cheap. And I mean dirt cheap. For example, your typical epipremnum aureum, devil's ivy, golden porthos, whatever. That is so cheap. It's so cheap. The self-watering pot, it's a self-watering pot. I think it's got um, some air vents in the bottom, which, yeah, okay, great, fine. I guess they have to make it more filtery, I suppose. But that's essentially what it is. So why on earth is it this much money? It's nothing special so far. So far. So... We get, with this purchase, we get three months of power drops in there with the plant, right? So let's see how much it's actually going to cost us. With a 21% discount, you can get these power drops on a auto-renew supply. So every three months, so every quarter or whatever. And it's $39, okay? $39, which I think works out at $13 a month, okay? Just for the drops, just for the drops, okay? Now, in order to even get anywhere with this, we need to go into the backing, right? And if you wonder why I'm looking off screen, I'm actually looking at all the stuff I'm talking about. So I'm not being rude. I'm just genuinely looking. So looking at the backing, I went straight to the FAQs. That's usually a good place to start because normally FAQs can steer you in the right direction, right? The FAQs got me, uh, the title of the FAQ section got me a little bit because my, my bullshit omida is, it's, it's popping off, okay? So basically, from what I can deduce from this, they're a little bit quiet about this actually on their website. So they have something called the Neo PX, which is what we've just been looking at, right? And they have the Neo P1. The P1 is in development and that appears that they are modifying the actual plant, whereas the PX is just the drops applied to their plant. Because so far, there's nothing in this PX, this Neo PX, there's nothing happened to the Epipremnum. That's a host plant. I think the guy even said in the video, that's a host plant. So for the P1, it appears to be in development and it appears that they haven't secured funding for it yet. And what they have at the moment from their own description seems pretty inconsistent. So that's something to note. But anyway, let's go back to talking about PX, which is what I'm going to cover in this video, because you can buy that now. And we don't know enough about P1, right? I'm sure it's the same technology though. Hold that thought, I'd like to talk about Squarespace, the sponsor of today's video. If you're looking to create and manage your own website online, then Squarespace might be exactly what you're looking for. My shop, the Right Plant Shop, uses Squarespace, and also my brand new plant care brand, Nurture System, also uses Squarespace. But recently, guys, Squarespace just got even more slick. Here's a generic website I've made. In this case, we've gone for fitness. Why not? I can add a new section, make it an introduction. I can, of course, add any text I want. But a really cool thing I can do here is to use Squarespace's new AI feature, where basically I tell Squarespace to write me an introduction based on whatever I tell it to. Here's a full-blown intro that the AI has written about fitness and counting macronutrients. It's also written it in a conversational style that I picked earlier in the setup process, which is really cool. If you want Want to create a really sleek looking website either for yourself or perhaps you're setting up a web shop like mine head to squarespace.com for your free trial and when you're ready to launch head to squarespace.com forward slash kaylee allen to save 10 percent off your first purchase of a website or domain okay back to the video so the sciencey bit i need to tell you right that their whole website is quite, I don't want to say it's convoluted, but it kind of is convoluted. And in order to find this white paper, I had to go to a very certain section in the FAQ to find this, all right? I can't go through all of this white paper because obviously insanity, right? It would take ages, but I'm going to do my best. Sorry, I've got the itchiest eyebrow in the world, but I'm going to do my best to summarize it. But I do need you to know just how hidden this was. This, this was quite hidden. You'd think it would just be up front on the website. Like here's all our papers, here's our research, blah, blah, blah. No, it wasn't. So it's not even in the section before we go on. It's not even in the section. How does Neo PX work? It's just buried in the FAQ. Anyway, I digress. I digress. So to briefly summarize the paper that I'm looking at, neoplants, whenever I say they, I mean neoplants, they explain what VOCs are, right? These are known as volatile organic compounds. They can come from pollution like car exhaust, but also indoor things like engineered wood products. What else have we got? Paints, cleaning chemicals, etc. 
Okay. These VOCs, as they will henceforth be known, can cause anything from allergies, asthma, and in some cases, even cancer. They do have various sources that you could probably see throughout uh, this listed. And when you view it online, you click on the ref little icon, it will take you to a reference, okay? Which is cool because at least now we know that they cite references when they have them. Okay. So ways to combat VOCs are two, according to them, according to them. The ways to combat VOCs are to A, limit the presence of VOCs, pretty simple, and B, open a window, which apparently the second solution remains unsatisfactory. Just let, just, just let it, just let it sink in. We then get a table, a, a big table actually, this kept going, this just kept going. We then get a table explaining the advantages and disadvantages of various air cleaning technologies. For example, your air purifiers, your Dysons, all of that, all of the stuff that we know that we have, okay? The notable disadvantages generally for them were listed as being that a replacement was required, which I think they probably mean filters, but we'll get to that later on, trust me. Confusing rating metrics, high pressure drops, can affect the devices. All right. Uh, electricity requirements, blah, blah. Electricity, fair enough. Okay. And that's, that's, that's Neoplants is, I don't want to say it's a USP, but it, it's sort of what they're leaning on, right? No electricity, blah, blah, blah. It's like organic and whatever, if you haven't picked that up already. I don't really feel that this table in here is very practical because all I need to know is how does this plan work? Does this plan work? Unless you've got some serious backing, I don't really need to know how it compares to things like that, okay? Because so far, all I, all I feel they're trying to do in my personal take is trying to dissuade us from using all of these electronic devices, okay? Then guys, then, 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 then. This happens so often and y'all, if, if you read any art article online, whether it's AI or not, you must be sick of this, but we get the faithful NASA study. This NASA study was done, I believe in 1989, my birth year, very cool. They did a study and suggested that some plants can remove VOCs, which is why we get all those AI generated NASA approved houseplants articles, right? We've all seen them everywhere, honestly. They've been gone for years. Literally. Neoplants claims that lab studies are great and all that, right? But in actual fact, you would need dozens of houseplants per room to have an impact. Remember this, dozens of houseplants, okay? Which apparently, guys, by the way, is not practical. How many do I even have behind me? Uh, I have six. I can't count. I have six behind me and that's for a very small display. So I guess that's not practical either. But anyway, what gets to me is that they're very happy to reference stuff like this, right? This NASA study from 1989, big one. Most of you probably may know about it, not the ins and outs of it, but you'll know that NASA and houseplants, blah, 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 right? It, it, it's, it's a thing, okay? They're happy to reference this, but there has been, there's been a few studies, but there's a very notable one from 2019, which is considerably later, okay? that basically argued that potted plants do not improve air quality. They, they're not very good at removing VOCs. And this is mainly because that the plants in our home cannot compete with the air exchange that takes place on a daily basis, right? So opening a window, opening a door, going in and out of the house. No matter what your plants can do in a day, it's not gonna compete with opening the door briefly and closing it because that sheer amount of air that's being exchanged can't compete, okay? That's what this experiment sort of uh, found, I guess, or suggested. And I think it says that in actual fact, you probably need somewhere between 10 and 1,000 plants per meter squared of a building's floor space for the combined VOC removing ability by potted plants to achieve the same removal rate that outdoor to indoor air exchange already provides in typical buildings. So you've got, just to the super quick recap, you've got Neoplant saying, ah, oh, you need like dozens, because like NASA said this, but like that's in a lab. So you need like a dozen, maybe two dozen, maybe three dozen. We don't know, just dozens, dozens. Okay. And other studies are saying, no, yo, like this is 10, between 10 and a thousand plants per meter squared. I don't think you can get a thousand plants per meter squared. Not certainly not the ones we keep anyway, but anyway. So let's just say that NeoPX is worth dozens of house plants, like they claim that you need. Let's just say that you need one in every room in the house. Do you know how much of that is, guys? Do you know how much that is with these drops? Jesus. They're again saying dozens of potted plants would be needed to have an impact in a single room, which is not practical. All right. All right, neoplants. I can see very quickly the audience that this, this company is targeting and it ain't us, okay? But this is why we're going to talk about it. So 
they do, honestly, this is full of experiments. It's full of jargon, which I'm going to get to later on because I did actually have someone that has a more sciencey background to have a look at this for me. I have a background in tech. I don't have a background in this, although I will give my opinion on something later on. It's absolutely hilarious, to be honest. But anyway, so this paper is full of stuff. I'm going to link it down below. It's a lot. Personally, I think it's designed to be a lot for the typical reader. If you feel like having a read of it for, for any reason, or just to see if you think it's a lot and it's deliberately sort of overcomplicated, link is in the description, let me know. But anyway, they did an experiment and the results of this experiment would suggest that once they've treated an epipremnum, right, their epipremnum versus a normal epipremnum, it's round about 10 times more effective appearing the air than the non-treated epipremnum. I think it actually comes out at 9.5, but let's just say it's 10 times more effective than a normal non-treated epipremnum. So if they're saying I need dozens, if I need, say, 36 epipremnum, non-enhanced epipremnum to purify a room, does that actually mean I need three or four of their plants to purify a room? Is that what I need? Do I need three or four of Neo PX? Is that what I need? Because I'm not sure your pricing makes that practical. At all. At all. It's like hundreds of dollars for that, for one room. Also, as well, just looking at one of these tables showing that effectiveness, I actually think it's really sus that you are taking plants here that have so little output on purification just to skew the average against everything else, because I think they're saying that it's, they're not saying it was 30 times more effective than the other samples, but you are deliberately taking plant samples that are barely even registering. It's just, it's just silly. I don't know why we're calling this one pothos as well and not just epipremnum. That's, I don't know, are you trying to be more technical here? I don't know. Let's not think too deeply. Anyway, moving on to a little bit more about NeoPX. So basically, they explain that the microbiomes, which is what's in this power drops, right? It's microbiomes, microbiomes. Basically, from what I can detain, it's bacteria and fungi that use VOCs as a source of carbon, right? So they're going to eat it all up. That's what they're going to do. I don't know. Can you tell I'm not from biological background? It's quite funny. Just go with it. So I do actually wonder, though, how a fertilizer is going to affect this. Right, because you still need to feed your plants. And the way that this is written suggests that the microbiomes are their own thing and that's what's given to the plant, right? So, for example, it doesn't have to be my feed. I'll use my feed as an example. I don't know what my feed's going to do to that bacteria. Is it going to kill it? I don't know. They're not saying that. They don't, I don't think they're expecting anybody to fertilize this plant. It's still a plant, still needs feeding. Do you know what I mean? But I think because it says, Acknowledging our bacteria's specific needs, not the needs of the plant, because that's surplus. That's why they're using epipremnum. They're using it because it's cheap. Cheap as hell. And the margin on that for one of these plants must be hellish, okay? Especially now they're growing it themselves as well. We crafted a tailored formulation for power drops to one, support bacterial growth, two, enhance BTX metabolism, which I should have explained before. That's a breakdown of, I think it's benzene, toluene, and another one. So they're targeting three VOCs. I should have made that clear. Hopefully the guy in the video did. Three VOCs mainly. And three, to extend the shelf life of the bacteria. Ensuring an efficient, durable bioremediation solution. God damn, that's hard to say. So maybe this is why they chose a cheap house plant, because if there's a problem, they'll just replace your new PX because they're not dealing with plant feed, they're just dealing with this bacteria, okay? Fair enough, they're not making a house plant, they're trying to make basically an air purifier. I do understand that, and I will try and keep that in mind. Believe me, we're going to keep that in mind. So... They don't actually seem, from what I can see here, to have any research to back up why and how they came up with the idea that the plant needs to be topped up monthly. I don't think there's anything in here. They've just sort of said, top it up monthly, here's your subscription. So, okay. They, oh, guys, I'm not covering this. I'm not covering this. They mentioned the self-watering plant pot, which they call the shell. Again, they're just trying to make that sound as space age as possible. It's, guys, it's a fucking self-watering pot with some, some air vents. Like, I'm not covering this. I'm not covering this. That, that really annoys me. But anyway, and they probably put the air vents in, not for the health of the roots. They've done it to make it be like a filter because if it had no air vents in it, then people are going to be like, how's it purifying the air? I know why they've done this. I know why they've done this. It pisses me off. It pisses me off. Anyway, so back to this air purification thing, right? In this paper, they they do prove in their experiment, whatever, that their enhanced epipremnum is lowering toluene levels in the air, right? The problem is they've not given us any context for what is a toxic level in the air. I can't remember how far they lowered it because I have notes here. I'm not necessarily looking at the whole paper, but 
It's not answering the question of does this plant, this product take levels of toluene in the air that are from a harmful level to an okay level? Or are they taking toluene levels from the air that are at a low level and just making it a bit lower? And it was safe anyway. Like there is no, there's no context for any of this. They're just doing graphs going, look, it's lowered it. And it's like, yeah, cool. I'm guessing this is also in a lab as well. So it's just like, hmm, right, okay. So what relative concentration in the air did it remove? Otherwise, why do I care? Why why do I care? Do you, do you get what I'm what I'm saying? I just feel like this whole thing, it's designed to be complicated. I'd like to think I'm not a stupid person, but some of this genuinely had me reading it twice. Maybe it's because I'm not of a biology background. I completely appreciate that. And I would love to hear what you guys think because I know my audience is super smart and I know you're all from different walks of life. And I would love to hear people's take on this because honestly, guys, if there's something I'm not picking up in this video, feel free to correct me. I will not be insulted. If I've got something totally wrong and somebody comments on this and is like, oh my God, this this makes total sense. What a great idea. I can see this working. Then say so, right? And we'll have a discussion because this is why I'm doing this video because I want to bring this to everybody's attention and I want to work out if it's bullshit, basically. I mean, I don't think it's bullshit, but we'll get onto that later. Also, what, one thing I do have to say is this, this Neo-PX, this Epipremnum, right? Who's to say if I didn't give the, the power drops to another plant, say, well, it could be either the ones behind me, it could be like a big large form. Say, say it's a tired constellation, we all kind of know what one of those, right? Are you gonna tell me that if I gave those same power drops to, say, a tide constellation, it's not probably gonna work better? Because the leaves have a larger surface area for the purification? Is that not how it works? Because you're not really telling me how it works. So you're gonna tell me that leaf surface area has nothing to do with this? So why, if it does, why are you picking a piffly little epipremnum? Why not just sell the drops? Make that your thing. I don't know what this epipremnum in the self-watering pot is. Am I right? I feel like the epipremnum in the self-watering pot is to make some margin back to make you feel like you're getting more and to target people that have no clue is what I think. But there is no way that leaf surface doesn't have any relevance in this. There's just no way. I'm sorry, there's no way. Because again, according to your little video on your website, you didn't change anything about the epipremnum. You just said it was a good host. So that's a bog standard epipremnum. So why do I need it? Why can't I just give that to my plants? I mean, I, I wouldn't because I don't know what it's going to do with feed. It might just, I don't know. I don't know because you're not telling me because you probably haven't researched it, to be fair. I can't see anywhere either that they ran this experiment with any reproducible results. So I, I don't know if they ran it more than once, basically. I could have missed it. I haven't seen it. It's packed with a whole load of jargon and... Honestly, I've had a biologist read this and even they were like, this is needlessly, like you didn't, you didn't need all this for this. This is a, this is a hell of a way of saying this. Do you know what I mean? It, it's just a bit much because I wanted to make sure again, it wasn't just me being bombarded because I'm not from biology background. Then again, if you are selling this plant to people that don't, let's be honest, don't really know about plants. You probably shouldn't be trying to bombard them because I don't like that because it's it's not fear mongering. That's not the right word, but it's you're trying to confuse people into be thinking, oh, it's really technical. It must be good. And I know they're doing this. Do you know how I know they're doing this? Get a load of this. So even right because they do this in their FAQs as well, but they have an air calculator. Right. And <laughs> I I ran it. I got a very basic box standard result. I'll share it on the screen if you like. I did it off my bedroom. I did it off being like suburban house, whatever. I'll put it on the screen anyway. It's not very interesting, so I didn't include it. Okay. However, I think on that link on that email, it says like, do you want to see our like um our background for this air calculator, right? And I click on it and I died because it shows you this is how much it wants to be convoluted and bombard you, right? And this is where I get to laugh because they put in the code they used to calculate the answers to your questions, right? And anybody from a software engineering background will laugh at this. Let, let me show you this. It's, I mean, I don't know what that's written in personally. It's probably not pseudo. It's probably actual code because it doesn't read that well. But it literally says, here is the, for reference, like we fucking need it. Here is the code used to calculate the quantity of formaldehyde released from burning candles. And they give you the fucking if statements. Do y'all feel better? Do y'all feel better? Because honestly, I feel like that is what the, the, the white paper is doing. I think it's doing the same thing. I can't comment. I'm not from biology background, so I won't. But I have had a biologist look at it with a degree in biology, right? And they said that. So I'm just going off that. 
all right? This takes the piss, look at it. Also, please, as a software engineer, please don't hard code your values. I don't like it, I don't like it. I haven't got it on my little snapshot here, but even further up in this document explaining the code, they even kept the variable names in just to make it look extra techy. And I know software engineers will laugh at that. They kept the variable names with the underscores in and I just thought, oh my God, like, what are you doing? Why? why? Nobody cares, nobody needs this. You are trying to be complex. You don't need to be. If you really, if you really knew your market and you knew who you're selling to, you wouldn't do this. God, I'm getting so heated. Oh, give me one moment. I need to, I need to chill. It just annoys me. It always annoys me, especially when you bring code into it. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. But anyway, moving on from the code. I had to, I had to show you that, guys, because it's so funny. Software engineers, leave a, leave a like if you actually thought that was funny, because I did. And it can't just be me. It can't just be me. Right, anyway. Right, right. Back to it. Let me hydrate, guys. Oh no, oh, my straw's done that thing where it just puts Pepsi everywhere. Don't do it. Don't, don't. Okay, right. So the white paper in full transparency was, it was more involved than what I've covered, right? Because I'm not going to sit here, guys, and go through a white paper with you. I will leave that to a biologist, right? I'm not going to do it. It's not my place, in my opinion, because I don't know this sort of stuff. I know it's marketed at people that don't know, but even still, I'm not about to rip into something that I don't fully know. And I pride myself on shit like that, okay? So I'm going to leave it in the description. So obviously I haven't broken it fully down, but... I did find this, right? This is on, I think, the front of their website. They have a few little articles linked. I didn't even read them all. There's only about four. I didn't read them all. Didn't care. Didn't care. But I found this statement from the CEO in one of these articles, right? And he says, right? It says, the company will offer concentrated doses of proprietary microorganisms it calls power drops. Nice name, by the way to maintain the plant's air cleaning efficiency. These will need to be applied monthly, much like replacing the filter in an air purifier. Here's the kicker, guys. CEO says, Dyson, they sell their filters. We sell microbiome. If that doesn't sum this shit up for you, what does? But I tell you something, dude, you really should not have mentioned Dyson. You should not have mentioned Dyson, but okay, let's go. So, welcome to Dyson. Right, we're gonna take Dyson as an example. I feel like they're one of the flagship manufacturers of many, many electrical goods. I own a few Dyson things. I own a Hoover, I own hair dryers, hair stylers. It's all good shit, right? But in this case, we're gonna go through their air purifiers and maintenance cost of an air purifier, you know, Dyson, whatever, per year, is basically a filter change. We're not talking about electric yet, filter change, okay? So I think, according to their website when I looked, which was yesterday, their most expensive filter is around about £85, which is about $108 hairs. So Neoplants, Neoplants, reminds me of Neopets, that. Neoplants wants to sell us four times $39 a year because it's three months, $39, okay? Which is $156 annually for one plant. And you've already bought the plant, by the way. That's not including, this isn't including the cost of buying the things because I'm aware that is a cost, right? I'm not really even touching on that in today's video because I don't think it even, it's not even about that. So we're just discounting the original cost, right? This is just maintenance cost. So you've got as most expensive, you've got about $108 probably versus $156. And I know what you're going to say. You're going to talk about electricity, right? But $156 annually for Juan plant. Juan small plant, I might add. It doesn't look very big. I mean, they've given us beautiful pictures on their website. It's all wireframe and oh, wonderful, honestly. But anyway, one plant, $156. Two plants, $312 a year. Three plants, $468 a year. Not practical though, guys. Not practical. I'm going to take one of the cheapest, can't guarantee it's the cheapest, but one of the cheapest air purifiers from Dyson that I could find at the time. And I've gone with the TP00, we'll call it. We're gonna start with electricity because it is relevant. It is relevant, you're running something electrical versus, well, a plant, the Neo PX. So I found some information as of May 9th and I'm having to go off UK prices because I'm in the UK, but just extrapolate guys, okay? So the Dyson TP00 is about 55 watts, which is actually about the same as your laptop on average. The average fridge is 150 watts. I think an LCTV was 120 watts. So just to, to, you know, to sort of let you know where we stand there. For a 50 watt laptop in the UK, you're looking at around about 1p an hour at the current prices, right? Quite a bit. So that's 24 pence a day. Lovely maths on this. Times 30. I didn't go for 30.5. I went for 30. That's £7.20 a month, which over a year, that is £86. Pounds. Okay. The filter for this particular model that they do recommend changing annually is £69. So the total is £155, which 
is a total of $197 to maintain and run the Dyson. Okay, so $197 for the Dyson per year, including electric, versus $156 for the Pothos is only a $40 saving. That's not all of it. It obviously depends on what removes more and whatever, whatever. It's it's quite a lot of money that for something that could die. Do you know what I'm saying? Like they're selling this to people that don't know plants necessarily. They, I mean, they have to be literally. That's a lot of money for something that could literally, it's got more probability of packing in than what the Dyson does. Plus Dyson will have a guarantee. So at least with Dyson, you're getting a year out of it, but whatever. Dyson air purifier apparently can also give me information. I don't own one, can you tell? Like air quality index, nitrogen dioxide readings, VOCs. Particulate matter, which I didn't touch on, but in this white paper, Neoplans really doesn't like particulate matter, like, at all. It just doesn't like it. it. says the molecules are too big or whatever. I don't know. But particulate matter contains things like pollen, dust, pet dander, smoke, bacteria, and allergens. Reasonably important things, I would say. It does seem pretty useful. <laughs> Not practical, though. Plus, technically, the Neopx is, in fact, toxic to pets because it's epipremnum. The Dyson is not, you feel me. And I don't know if people are even going to think about whether a plant is toxic or not. I'm not sure. It's interesting they chose a plant that was toxic to pets. Surely an easy save would be to choose one that wasn't. I, I find that a little bit odd, but whatever. So running one Neopx plant for one month, excluding water, excluding anything else, just having it there and putting the shit in it. That's $13 a month, as we know, right? Not including what we've bought it for. Who cares? Doesn't matter. Running a Dyson TP00 each month is round about $16.41, which is like $3 higher. And then again, that includes your electricity and it includes the price for the annual filter change within that month. If we added back the 21% that they just so happened to take off the discount for the, the subscribe and save, the auto renew, whatever you want to call it, if you add that back on, that comes back up to $49, which works out at $16.33 a month, which actually means without the discount, the Neo PX is going to be eight cents cheaper than a Dyson. Eight cents, guys. And these guys reckon they're going to take over the world. Wow, I don't, wow, honestly. So another thing as well, the Dyson air purifier, they, 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 they range and this, they are a bit cagey. I'll be honest about what the coverage is. They were doing it like meters cube and stuff like that. But I think they can generally cover 300 to 600 square foot, maybe a little bit more. I think this model, the TP00, covers around about 300 square foot. Right, great, cool. Except I don't think NeoPX has a coverage space, right? So I don't think they know. I don't think we know what it covers. So I can't even compare it because... I don't know. My point is, how can you rip off all these purifiers when you're not telling me what the coverage is, how many I need, everything like that? Like, is it better than a Dyson? But one of their main points was, oh, you know, the, the air purifiers, this and the other, the electricity is bad, the stuff has to be replaced, like your product doesn't need added stuff. That's very cheeky, personally, just saying. But they also say that, you know, they, they don't fight against VOCs, right? So Dyson air purifiers fight against the following. Allergens, benzene, which is, I think, one of their, their three. Formaldehyde, pet dander, pollen, aspergillus mold, dust mites, bacteria, H1N1 virus, which happens to be swine flu, nitrogen dioxide, and VOCs, which are not broken down because I understand that VOCs can be from a lot of things. It can be from, as we covered before, engineered wood, um, cleaning chemicals, probably aerosols, hairsprays, deodorants, shit vapes. That's another thing that's in there. I think the, the toluene actually can come from vapes, by the way. There's a little nugget I found out yesterday. Do you want to know what NeoPX fights against? That they say specifically, specifically, benzene, toluene, xylene. Okay. It literally says, this is in the uh, FAQs, I think. Literally, literally says, it's been bioengineered to capture and recycle some of the most harmful volatile organic compounds. Specifically, benzene, toluene, and xylene. All right. Just confirming, guys. I made this shit up. So... Does that mean that the plant doesn't protect against the things that the Dyson protects against? Because so far, to me personally, the Dyson is winning. All right, it's a few more cents a year or whatever. It's $3 more a month, whatever it ends up being with the discount, whatever. But how do I know which one is more effective? You haven't compared it. I noticed you haven't compared it. It's very interesting. Very, very brave. Very brave to mention Dyson in an interview and just not compare it. Honest to God. 
But what happens, guys, right? Think about it this way. Let's, let's consider this. These guys just don't seem to think about what happens when this plant grows. Because what happens when it outgrows its planter, its little shell? Because I just bet that you will have plenty of shells at the ready to show for a lot of money. Or maybe you won't, because now, does the amount of power drops have to go up when the plant gets larger because the mass won't be correct for the mass of the plant? Like, how the shit have you worked this out? Plants grow, you know? Or maybe you're feeding it with something that's, that's not gonna grow. I, I don't know what your thought process is. Does it just get replaced? Why would you want to limit the purification power of your product? Maybe it's because you want us to buy more. Is that it? I I don't I don't get it. I don't get it. Now, honestly, I'm just a layman. I'm not a biologist. I've got a couple of businesses, but it's it's nothing groundbreaking, okay? But why didn't you just work on the power drops, drop the self-watering pot? You can use um, Epipremnum as a, an example, if you like. Pick some maybe other very popular houseplants to see how it works on them and create a product that boosts any houseplant's purification ability. Providing the research backs it, by the way. This is just assuming that what they say is great and it's amazing, right? Because someone else, no doubt, will break this down for me. But why don't you just do that? Just trademark it, sell that. I tell you now, you'll have a better time. You'll have a way better time because no one is going to want to do this that has plants. You are limiting your market so much. I don't, I don't get what you're doing. Just sell the drops. Sell the fucking drops. Am I, like... I don't know, honestly. Why do we have to buy a crusty ass pothos, no offense, in a basic bitch watering pot, self watering pot? Like, why can't I just give it to my Gloriosum in my L hole? Do you know what I mean? Like, I don't, I don't get it. Does it, does it fuck up other plants? We don't know. Do you know why? Because you haven't fucking tested it. But they did mention when they were on about the Neo P1, they did mention that they were having some, some, I can't remember how they put it, some, some problems anyway. So it was still in development. They didn't get funding or whatever. So I don't know what that is. I'm not going to comment on it, but. Mm. Maybe this is difficult. Maybe this is very difficult and they just haven't cracked it at all. But listen, right? I need to hydrate. Listen, guys, I don't hate this idea generally. I actually don't. Hence, I'm saying, look, if you sold the drops, if it did wonders, great. I'd expect that shit to be backed. Otherwise, it's damn near a placebo effect and I don't think it's very good. I suspect it can't be backed if it's true that you need, you know, uh, 10 to 1,000 plants per square meter because if this stuff is exponentially quite effective, then you still might need 10 plants per square meter, right? Let's just go really low end. That's still still not great. And then to remember how much you've got to spend on these drops, these drops are going to have to be affordable. There's no fucking way anybody is going to do this. I would be amazed if this takes off. If this takes off in a couple of years, I will be absolutely fucking amazed, honest to God. But I don't hate the idea. I think it's possible that they could do it in like 10 years, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. I do think they sort of mean well, but I think that if for people like us that keep houseplants, it's going to be taken in such a way where it looks like it's just exploiting people that are intimidated by houseplants and they don't know and, and everything else. That's how I take it. And the way that their white paper is, the way that they gave me fucking code for a, a basic calculator is just what? No, 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 no. If you are selling to people that you want to sell to, I, people that don't know, make it deliverable in a way that they will take it as it should be delivered and take it honestly because it's not coming off honest in my opinion. But I am just one person on the internet, guys. So I want to know, and I'm sure you've got plenty. I can just feel this one's going to be juicy. What are your opinions on this? Because my background, again, is tech. It's not this. It's not this. A little bit of business, a little bit of tech. That's all I've got. If you want to leave your opinion on this, please do below. I will leave a link to everything I've found. If you check the description of this video, you should find everything. I'll probably... I don't know if I can link the white paper separately, but I will try. I want to know what you guys think. I'm so curious on this one. But anyway, guys, let me know if you enjoyed this video. Please leave a like down below if you thought it was good. I've had a great time. I'm a little bit ranty, but I've had a good time. And if you are not already subscribed, I would absolutely adore it if you could do so. That is it, I do believe, for this week's video, guys. I will love you and leave you, and I will see you in the next one. Bye. Oh, my merch. My merch. My merch. Merch. In the description.